Hello, I'm Gordon from Cameralabs.com and this is my first looks review of the Canon EOS 200D or Rebel SL2. Now these are my first impressions of the camera having used it, having handled it at a Canon event and also having had the opportunity to ask Canon some questions I had about it. Now I will of course follow this up with my proper full in-depth review at Cameralabs.com and depending on when you watch this video that review might even be ready. So head on over to Cameralabs.com and see if that's there or stick around and watch the rest of this video where I'll tell you about the highlights of this new camera. The EOS 200D or Rebel SL2 is aimed at first time DSLR buyers, but not those who are after the cheapest budget option, such as Canon's own 1300D or Rebel T6. It's aimed at people who have got a little bit more to spend and they're after something that's smaller, better featured, more sophisticated overall. The 200D SL2 is available in three colours, black, silver and tan and white. This is the white model that I got to play with. I really like this colour. Normally you only see the white versions of Canon's DSLRs reserved for say the Japanese market. You often see tourists carrying them around and you think hey that camera looks pretty smart. So it's really nice to see that all of those colours are going to be available in all regions. The 200D or SL2 is the replacement for the original 100D or SL1, a camera that came out four years earlier. Now four years is a long time in digital camera terms and I personally was a little bit concerned that Canon had abandoned this product line. Well it's not exactly a line, it only had one camera in it didn't it? But it was a very very nice camera. If you remember my review at Cameralabs.com you'll know I was very fond of the 100D or SL1, partly because it offered a better feature set than a typical budget entry level DSLR, but more so because it had that smaller and lighter body. At the time mirrorless cameras were really attacking entry level DSLRs with particularly smaller and more portable form factors but then the 100D or SL1 came back and proved that you could make a DSLR that was very compelling in a smaller form factor that was still comfortable to hold and use and the 200D or SL2 inherits that. Canon can describe it as the world's smallest and lightest DSLR at least with the feature set that it has that I'll be describing in a moment. But first the sensor resolution which after four years as you'd expect has been boosted from 18 megapixels on the older model to 24 megapixels here. However more importantly Canon has upgraded the embedded autofocus system from a hybrid system on the original 100D or SL1 to dual pixel CMOS AF on the 200D or SL2. Now if you're familiar with other Canon cameras that have this technology you'll know that it absolutely transforms shooting in live view and movies. It allows the camera to basically redeploy roughly 80% of its imaging pixels as phase detect autofocus points. Now these are exactly the kind of autofocus points you want because they can very confidently move from one subject to another without overshooting it to know that it's gone past and then pull it back again. There's no hunting with this camera or very little hunting anyway and it allows the camera to really smoothly, quickly and confidently refocus whether you're shooting live view or movies. And I'm also pleased to say that the camera also supports continuous autofocus when you're shooting bursts in live view too. Now dual pixel CMOS AF on the 200D or SL2 is exploited by its brand new fully articulated and touch sensitive screen. This is a massive upgrade over the original 100D or SL1 which had a fixed screen that wasn't touch sensitive. So now you are able to flip that screen out, twist it around to any angle including facing forwards so you can film pieces to camera and you can tap to reposition that autofocus area. And as I said earlier that dual pixel CMOS AF technology allows the camera to very confidently rack between subjects near and far. Unlike many entry level cameras, the 200D or SL2 also features a 3.5mm microphone input. Now it doesn't have a headphone jack, you wouldn't expect one at this price or in this class, but the fact that it does have a microphone input, a hot shoe onto which you could mount an external microphone, a fully articulated screen that can flip back to face the subject, and a fantastic autofocusing system that can confidently track faces wherever they are on the frame means that the 200D or SL2 could in fact find itself as being the perfect camera for vloggers. I know that I'd certainly use it, especially with its smaller form factor and stylish looks. What's that I hear you say? <coughs> 4K? No, no, it's a Canon camera of course. They have to protect the high models in the range, unlike Sony and Panasonic doesn't seem to bother them does it but unfortunately there is no 4k video on the 200d or SL2. This camera tops out at 1080 60p so there's no slow motion in 1080 either but still for the target market 
it may not be that big an issue, but if you do want 4K at this kind of price point, just look towards Panasonic's Lumix cameras because they put it on almost everything these days. As an entry-level camera that's aimed at first-time DSLR buyers, the 200D or SL2 has to be friendly and easy to use. And to tackle this, Canon has equipped it with a guided user interface, which can take you all through the creative options. But conversely, once you become more confident with the camera, you can switch that off and just access the normal menus. Like its predecessor, the 200D SL2 is also equipped with an optical viewfinder with a fairly basic 9-point autofocus system with a single cross-type sensor in the middle. You wouldn't really expect anything much better than that at this price point. Canon's also slightly boosted the continuous shooting speed from 4 to 5 frames per second when you're shooting through the viewfinder. But perhaps more importantly and more interesting for this market is the presence of wireless connectivity. It's 2017, of course it should have Wi-Fi, but lest we forget, four years ago on the SL1 or 100D, Canon wasn't putting Wi-Fi in cameras like these. It was a feature that it thought obviously wasn't that important, even though other manufacturers did. But finally, they've seen the light and the 200D SL2 is fully equipped as you'd expect. It has Wi-Fi, it has NFC for phones that support that, and it also has Bluetooth. Now, Bluetooth is a really interesting technology, the way that Canon's implementing it. It allows the camera and your phone to maintain a low power, always on link. And this allows it to achieve some pretty cool things. Now, if you've ever used Wi-Fi on a camera before, you'll know that there's a couple of downsides to it. First is that there's this really annoying uh, constant need to reconnect every time you, you want to actually control the camera or transfer an image. Sometimes this works very smoothly, other times it can be a bit of a pain and you think, why can't this be easier? Well, Bluetooth takes care of all of that for you. In fact, it maintains that link so that when you do want to remote control the camera or transfer images over Wi-Fi, the Bluetooth sets up that initial connection for you and makes it very, very quick and easy. One of the other things you'll be familiar with if you've used Wi-Fi on a camera is when you're remote controlling it, often there's a very slight delay when you press the shutter release button and the actual camera fires the shot, especially over distance. So what Bluetooth allows the camera to do is support a very basic app on your phone that just has a big button. It's like a, a remote cable release, but it's instant. The response time is much faster than doing it over Wi-Fi, so that's also very nice to have. But Canon's also done a new thing with Bluetooth on the SL2 or 200D. It's the first camera in which it's implemented this. Even if the camera is switched off, your phone can still wake it up over Bluetooth, browse the images and copy them over. So this is really nice. As long as the camera's in range, you can still browse the images, copy them and share them using your phone. The camera could be in your bag. It could be on a sofa or on your bed or, you know, in the boot of a car. It doesn't matter. As long as it's within Bluetooth range of your phone, you can wake it up. You can browse the images, copy them over, and go ahead and share them as if they had been taken on your phone itself. So that's a really nice feature to have. And finally, some decent wireless connectivity on an entry-level Canon DSLR. And this brings me towards the end of my first look review of the 200D or SL2. And once again, I'll be doing a much greater review of this camera once I've been using it for a decent period of time. Now, my first feelings about this camera are uh, that it represents a much more compelling package than, say, the entry-level 1300D or Rebel T6. The body is smaller, it's lighter, it's more attractive. It has a more sophisticated feature set that includes better embedded phase detect autofocus and that fully articulated touchscreen. Couple that with that 3.5mm microphone input and you've got a camera that is very practical for video use, especially, again, for vloggers. The only real downside, the only fly in the ointment, is that it doesn't have 4K video. And at this price point, because it is a little bit more expensive than a 1300D or T6, you could, in fact, buy any number of mirrorless cameras that have an alternative and perhaps more attractive feature set. For example, again, Panasonic's Lumix mirrorless cameras will give you 4K video at this price. They'll even give you built-in image stabilization that works with any lens you attach. But conversely, while they do have touch screens at this price point, they won't always flip out to the side and be fully articulated. And of course, the Micro Four Thirds sensor is smaller than the APS-C sensor on the Canon. So there's lots of stuff to weigh up. It's not a completely one-sided argument. Personally speaking, I'm really pleased to see the 200D or Rebel SL2 arrive on the market. As you know, as I said earlier, I was very fond of the 100D or SL1. I really like that mini DSLR form factor, especially with its respectable feature set. And that fully articulated touchscreen, lovely jubbly.
Okay, head on over to cameralabs.com to see a more in-depth preview of this article, or indeed, if you're watching this video a few weeks or months after it was released, you may, in fact, find the full review. Or, in fact, reviews of any other camera that you might be interested in, or lenses, or any of my bias guides. So head on over there, check it out, let me know what you think. Oh, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks. Bye-bye.